First, I'd uh, like to say thank you to the organisers of the Hunter Innovation Forum for the opportunity for the Foundation to make a contribution to this very interesting uh, two and a half days. Um, for those of you who are not aware, the Foundation's been uh, active in the Forum and its predecessor, the Hunter Innovation Festival, since its second year, and indeed, uh, as a result of that, have incorporated monitoring of innovation activity amongst Hunter businesses since 2009 as part of our 25-year now uh, long time series on business conditions in the Hunter. We, and uh, in addition to that, uh, one of my colleagues, Caroline Veltheisen, also runs the data for the innovation scorecard, which the IDEA Hunter will talk to tomorrow. Uh, my presentation has been entitled The Evolving Hunter, Meeting the Challenges of Transition to a Smart Resource Region. And what I'm hoping to do today is to present you with some of the contextual factors uh, and some of the challenges and also the opportunities that have particular relevance to the region as food for thought as you go through this next couple of days. So what I'm going to cover, I'm going to speak a little bit to the role of innovation. I'm sure you'll repeatedly hear over these next few days some of the themes that John has referred to. You're going to hear about innovation, productivity and collaboration as really key themes, I think, of, of this forum. I'm going to talk a little bit about the role of innovation. I'm going to ask you to keep in mind uh, some of the contextual factors that John was talking about, which have particular relevance to the Upper Hunter. We are continuing to have a resource industry focus. Uh, it's been a major driver of economic growth in this area in recent times. It hasn't actually all gone away, uh, but it is certainly changing in nature and will uh, drive some of the uh, factors uh, that will sponsor innovation over the coming period. We have a high Australian dollar, which is associated with the massive uh, resources boom that ex Australia has experienced. And as anybody in manufacturing knows, that's particularly impacted on manufacturing and other export uh, industries. We have fiscal constraint at all levels of government, uh, and that is associated with a push towards public-private partnerships, which presents challenges and opportunities. But we also have a continuing context of low inflation in this country and a pretty robust labour market, although the structure of that is changing. I'll talk a little bit about uh, what's happening with our economy in terms of the resource industry. Then move to some of the challenges uh, and opportunities that are operating at national but particularly at regional level. I'm just going to touch on four of those that might sit in the back of your mind as you go through the next few days. And lastly, I'm going to have a quick look at uh, what the Foundation is doing in terms of the consequences of recognising some of these issues. Starting with what I might call Economics 101, the drivers of growth. The key drivers uh, have long been recognised as productivity and increases in productivity, and secondly, population growth. It is of itself a driver of economic growth. Bear that in mind, please. Productivity, uh, the recent Australian Innovation System report tells us that businesses that innovate have a 70% increased likelihood of a productivity increase in the following year if they innovate. We're defining innovation fairly broadly. It's not just about goods uh, it's, and products. It's about the way things are produced. It's about the variety of services that might attach to those goods. And it's about um, the, the markets that people find and who they collaborate with in doing all of that. So innovation increases the likelihood of increasing productivity. Innovation in collaboration with research organisations lifts that likelihood from 70% to 240%, and that's research based on Australian industry. That must resonate at the regional level. The relevance of all of that um, 
regionally is that the OECD tells us that regions are becoming the global competitive forces with success based on uh, innovation. And that has to do with scale. A region is the scale at which there can be meaningful interaction amongst firms, people and knowledge generators. It's that tacit uh, transfer of knowledge. Region-specific advantages they find are actually embedded in specialised firms, skilled labour and therefore innovation capacity. And that provides the main ad advantage of those regions through the innovativeness of their enterprise base. What that means for the hunter is that whilst we have some very innovative firms, we need a systemic approach to increasing the level of innovation across the region. Turning to the context, we are a region that has been and in fact has become increasingly dependent on the resource sector. As John mentioned, we are moving very rapidly from what has been a massive investment cycle that has powered not only economic growth but drawn new population into the region and with those popula that population has come more skills. We're now moving into the production phase and that is going to continue to generate uh, a degree of economic activity in the region and uh, will continue to hopefully uh, require supply from uh, suppliers in the region. I, I suspect that Michael and John are going to talk to you some about the changing uh, nature of that. What's more, um, the International Energy Authority and the Bureau of Resource Eco Energy and Economics tell us that there is going to be ongoing demand, uh, particularly from Asia, for the products of this region. I should say that uh, along with the investment cycle in, in resources has gone massive investment in this region in infrastructure. So we have now the Hunter Valley coal chain, uh, substantial increases to the operation of the port, things like the Hunter Expressway. And those sorts of uh, infrastructure can continue to underpin productive activity here. There is going to be continued demand for what comes from out of the ground here, but also there is growth in alternative sources of energy, uh, and that should present opportunities for this region. However, uh, one of the major drivers of the rapid drawback in the investment cycle is the fall in the, the coal price, as competitors in other countries have come on stream, uh, natural cyclical occurrence. Uh, but what that means for businesses in the Hunter is greatly increased pressures on the costs of what they supply to the industry. And again, I think you'll find you'll hear more about that. So what does that mean in terms of how we might be evolving? The best picture that we can uh, get easily of that is the structure of employment in the Hunter region. And what we're looking at here is the last five years or so of numbers of em employees in different industries. Uh, John, I think, mentioned the, the growth in healthcare and tourism, which is what underlines the, the hospitality industry. Those are growing areas. Mining remains uh, a, a substantial employer in this area and has in fact been continuing to grow in numbers up to the year end of February this year. Manufacturing, which was, if you go back 20 years ago, was probably the, the major employer in this area, is still a major area of employment. It is a much bigger industry in the Hunter than it is, for example, in the rest of New South Wales. It had held up fairly well, uh, even through the global financial crisis, until the drawback in the mining industry, and it has seen some falls since then. We have some very innovative small uh, manufacturers in this region, and manufacturing punches well above its weight in terms of driving productivity and innovation, and in terms of its contribution to the economy. So it's an important uh, industry for us to continue to support. The other uh, 
key line on that chart that I would draw your attention to is the drop-off in professional scientific and technical service employment. And that, too, is a challenge for this region. Uh, that is something of concern, given the role that um, those sorts of skills have in driving productivity. That's not the total picture of employment. The total picture of employment does a sort of gentle sideways upwards track through the, through the hunter. We have not yet been seriously impacted in terms of unemployment. Hopefully we won't be, but that remains to be seen. Turning now to some of, some of the areas of challenge and opportunity, I'm only going to address four of them briefly that you might like to keep in mind as we go forward. Those are the effects of the Asian century, education levels, the ageing population and our innovation system. All of these are relevant at national level, but they have particular application to the hunter. The Asian century is not just about the resources industry, even though some of our, um, ex uh, our markets may regard us as a hole in the ground. Increasingly, uh, as the middle classes in Asia, particularly China and India, grow, the nature of their consumption is changing, and that presents real opportunities uh, as well as challenges for Australian production and services. The Australian Innovation System report highlights innovation and knowledge of markets as the keys to doing business with Asia. And we are an innovative nation. We can export smart design. There'll be demand for our agricultural services. And arguably, in this area, we should also be developing knowledge of those markets because we've been exporting to them for some time. This particular chart is just a, uh, an indication of what might be possible as our Australian dollar declines in value. It's being very sticky at the moment, but hopefully that will change over time. It's modelling that's been done by Australian economists on the wine industry, which is one of our vital industries in the Hunter, and just shows the difference in the level of demand that might uh, occur if the Aussie dollar gets back to pre-2011 values as compared with where it has been recently. An area of challenge and of opportunity. Education levels uh, are something that I'm sure the importance of education is something you're going to be hearing about. What's showing on that chart is um, four areas. The bright red is Newcastle and Lake Macquarie together. This is the new uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics um, statistical geographical standards. So we, we're moving away from local government areas as the basis of reporting to these things called SA4s. There are more um, teased out levels underneath that. But this, this makes the point. Mm -hmm. Newcastle is the bright red. The rest of the hunter is the black. New South Wales in blue and Australia in green. And what we're seeing is that one of the uh, key criteria by which the education level of an area is judged is year 12 completion. The Hunter Valley, uh, the outside of Newcastle and Lake Macquarie, is a regional area. Most regional areas lag on this indicator, uh, but that's certainly true here. And you can see that the levels of completion decline uh, with age. Newcastle and Lake Macquarie don't do too badly, still lagging behind um, the state and the nation. And remember that Newc in, within Newcastle, those levels are very much boosted by the presence of a, a large university here, which draws some of the young people from other parts of the Hunter, of course. Of particular concern is that between 2006 and 2011, the proportion of younger people completing Year 12 actually dropped a bit in this area, uh, which is surprising given the sort of supports that there are for Year 12. Anecdotally, it looks as though uh, some of that was a draw of young people into uh, the resources industry, hopefully into apprenticeships and traineeships. Certainly those got a kick along over that period, but they have dropped off in the last two years as well, quite alarmingly. So again, a challenge for us. It's not all bad news though in terms of education. If we look 
instead at post-school qualifications and particularly at Certificate 3, which is roughly equivalent to Year 12 and above within the working age population, we find that, in fact, uh, the lower hunter tracks not too badly at all. The upper, the rest of the hunter does lag um, and it hasn't caught up much either between 2001 and 2011. But this is key. Post-school qualifications have been found to be key to adaptability of labour uh, and to innovation. So here is opportunity. Here is something that we can build on. And turning to a related factor, which is the ageing population, it's something we need to consider uh, in terms of going forward and how we maintain and continue to attract younger people with high levels of skill into this area. This is the change in numbers of people in different age groups between 2006-2011. We actually have an older age profile in the Hunter. We, are, we share the nation's uh, challenge in having a large number, a large portion of our workforce reaching retirement age around now and in the coming 10 years or so. And that's the, uh, this large number that are circled. Those people will be taking skills out of the workforce with them. So the challenge is to ensure that we're more than replacing those. The increase in the number of young people uh, between the censuses in the Hunter is partly a direct result uh, we can see when we dive down into the data of the pool uh, of job availability in this area. So, as I say, the challenge for us is to keep those younger people who have brought additional skills in the area by providing jobs and opportunities for them that will attract them to stay here. That brings me to uh, the innovation system. The innovation system report uh, notes that the OECD characterises Australian business linkages to global value chains as weak. Not so much because of uh, Australian exports, we are an exporting country, but because of the type of products exported and that has direct relationship to the decline of our manufacturing industry because less and less are we making the elaborate transformations of our raw materials than we used to. And that is especially so here in the Hunter. So the challenge for us is to address that. And at the moment, uh, our data that I mentioned we're tracking innovation by businesses, our data is suggesting that innovation in the region is actually declining. There's been quite a marked drop between 2011 and 2013 in the proportion of small medium enterprises, which are most of our businesses in the Hunter, that have introduced new products or services in the past 12 months. That's in a context where nationally uh, we hit a peak of innovation in 2012. It may have declined since, and a part of the reason for that, both nationally and locally, is a decline in capital expenditure uh, intentions amongst small medium enterprises. Innovation generally requires uh, inputs of capital and skill, and the Reserve Bank of Australia has observed a similar trend and its uh, view is that this is going to continue until businesses see real signs of some turnaround in the economy. Again, a challenge for us. So what? Well, the Hunter Valley Foundation has taken all of this on board. Um, we are strongly of the view that a regional approach to the innovation system is required. It is very much about collaboration and the Foundation wants to be a part of that. At present, we're in the process of refocusing part of our regional research platform on, specifically on what we're loosely calling regional competitiveness, what our new CEO likes to refer to as future-proofing the region. We're taking an initial focus on manufacturing business, both because of the uh, critical challenges that it faces currently and because of its role in the Hunter and its role in uh, driving productivity. We are 
underway with uh, looking at how national and international trends apply in the hunter. And we're going to be investigating what makes some hunter firms successful and others not. So it's not just about those firms that are already innovating, it's about spreading that to those that are having difficulty being innovative. Initially, we're seed funding this research from our own funds, but we will, uh, we, and we are talking already with key stakeholders in business, academia, state and federal government agencies and taking their advice. But we're also looking to partner with key stakeholders as time goes on. And the aim of this is, by the end of this year, to produce some practical initiatives for policymakers and businesses in the region. So I'd like to end by inviting you to the first stage uh, of this new research project, our next uh, economic breakfast, our next quarterly economic breakfast will be done. Sorry, dedicated not so much to our usual indicators, but specifically to this project. We have some pretty high profile speakers coming. We have Dr. Swee Mack, who's uh, CSIRO's Director of Future Manufacturing. We have Peter Byrne, who's uh, Director of Policy for the Australian Industry Group. Bob Cowan and some other innovative manufacturers will have a panel discussion, and our own Carolyn Bell Tyson, who is undertaking a PhD on the innovation system as it applies to the region, will also be a speaker. There are leaflets at the back. Uh, I thank you for your attention. I hope that's been some value to you. <laughs>